Whatever you're trying to work on with your voice, whatever you're trying to do to fix your voice and whatever problems you have with your singing or things you'd like to improve, you will always be told that you need to sing from your diaphragm, sing from your diaphragm. You need to fix your breath. You need to understand breath support. You need to get your breath function working for you. Blah, 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 blah. Why is that? Because it's true. Or at least if you don't fix it, it's always going to come back and bite you. You're always going to need to come back to it because it's the foundation of your voice. It's the engine of your voice. It's a really, really important part of singing technique. And no matter what else you try and do with your singing, if you haven't got your breath under control, nothing else will work. Nothing else will really properly work. You might understand a few things. You might find a few things about resonance. You might understand vocal cord closure or different things. You might start to get piece some of the pieces of the jigsaw together. But Without the breath control, it just won't work. Now, how do I know this? I know this because I'm a singer who spent years singing with absolutely terrible technique, and I've absolutely destroyed my voice to the point where I needed an operation a few years ago. And it was all too too little too late in learning the techniques that I now understand um, and I cause them self-damage, which I don't think is ever really fully re re repaired, um, and I'm still dealing with the consequences of that now. I'm quite passionate about making people understand vocal technique for those reasons. And I'm not someone who's just always understood singing and done it well. I'm someone who struggled and struggled and struggled. Um, and now I've learned why exactly I struggled. So breath control is incredibly important. It is the engine of your voice. It is the foundation of singing technique. If you don't have breath support, you will have other issues that start to happen, like tension. You will start to squeeze and use the wrong muscle groups to get the voice out whether that be in your abdomen, pushing the air through, whether that be squeezing and gripping with the wrong muscles in your throat round the larynx here, the extrinsic muscles, the ones that shouldn't be really getting involved at all. Um, you will create other problems if you don't have breath support. Now, breathing for singing and breathing into your diaphragm is not rocket science. It's not the hardest thing in the world but it does take some practice and it definitely takes some practice implementing it into songs and being able to do it quickly enough where you can just get a quick breath like that where people don't even know that you're doing it and you you out and in or you let the last little bit of air out towards the end of the line and then you're in and ready to go. Be reset, ready to go every line with the same amount of support. It does take some perseverance and practice. And it takes some attention to detail. And the first thing for every singer when they're trying to work on their voice is to understand what the hell they are doing. And breathing correctly isn't necessarily rocket science. It's not the most difficult thing in the world. You're just trying to make sure that you use these muscles down here instead of pretending to breathe in deep through, through your chest like that, leaving all of this unengaged and just loose and floppy and no support. It's just the sense of holding the cords together and just that tiny bit of strain where your body is engaged, your core is engaged a little bit. So you're using your body for support. If you're not using your body for support, it all just comes out of you like this, which I do when I'm talking. I've got a terrible talking uh, technique, if you like. I do all sorts of wrong things in speech and, and that, that plays into how you sing. And it's one of those things that I've had to work with. So it takes a little bit of attention to detail. It takes a little bit of attention to detail, noticing what you're doing. Even if you try and get a breath in and you feel like you're holding your breath back and you're sort of using your body's sort of core muscles, you're engaged a little bit. There's that sense of slight strain as if you're holding a weight where you've just got your body involved because the vocal cords that are at the top of that mechanism that allow you to strain and do strenuous things. And we need to use that whole mechanism to sing effectively and use the breath effectively. If you let go of it or you're squeezing it or you're pushing it and trying to hold it back at the same time, you will get all this tension and all this strain will start to happen. Believe me, I've been through it. Oh my God, I've been through it. It just takes a little bit of attention to detail. I've said this many times before, but what happens at the very start of your note tells you a lot about what's going on and it tells you a lot about your breath control. If you feel the push of air happen at the start of your the note, there's something wrong with that. If you feel ah, this squirmy running out of air, Type feeling, there's something wrong with that. If you go, -da -da -da, and you let all the air out in the first syllable, the first note, then there's something wrong with that. We can learn from every little part of what happens. You might take a breath, but then lose it all straight away. You might take a breath and grip so much that you're causing strain where you don't want to. You might take a breath and then be f pushing it out. 
Okay, there's all sorts of things to look out for that you don't realise you're doing, or I never did, and I've watched other singers and my students do the same thing, and they have no idea what they're doing. Things just happen when they sing. It's all an emotional expression, and they're not really aware of what they're doing with their instrument. And I implore you to start to notice every little bodily action, every little sensation that you feel in yourself when you're singing. This is your job if you really want to fix your voice. People want to fix their voice, they don't want to do the work. People think it's all a little bit woo and a little bit like... You know, they don't really take in the advice. You know, I've had advice from, from things where I probably don't take it in properly. When we're learning and when we're trying to fix something, sometimes we don't really take in the information. We don't really truly sort of believe it or take it on board properly. Um, but if you want to fix your voice, then you've got to get away from just singing songs. You've got to get away from the emotions of it. Stop just delivering songs emotionally and thinking that you're working on your voice. You're not working on your voice. You're not working on your voice until you start to pay attention to the mechanics of it and the nuances of every little detail until you start making strange noises and experimenting with the different sensations and playing around with what the muscles are actually doing you're not working on your voice stop kidding yourself i mean i was someone who got really committed to it and really dedicated to it but it still took me a long time to peel back the layers and actually start doing it properly and actually really start realizing what vocal technique is actually about what vocal work is it's making weird noises it's playing around with your voices until it feels effortless and not forced and if it feels forced and if there's something you're not sure about then try and get deeper into it try and work on sounds notes vowels different parts of your range playing around with the sensations not just focusing on singing songs move away from songs it's really important so i'm going to take you through a couple of things um for how to breathe um and step by step now people teach this in different ways and i've heard coaches talk about not breathing in massive deep breaths which i completely agree with obviously we don't need a ton of air to sing but what all we need is this we just need a little gulp. We need it to hit the back of the throat. If you breathe a sort of noisy breath, inhale, and you feel the air hit the back of your throat, you've probably got enough breath there, right? But what people will do is is is, is not engage their diaphragm. So they'll get that, but they're breathing into their chest and they're not getting the support. They're not getting the body to be engaged. They're not getting that sense of support where you're solid, where your body's doing the, doing the work for you and it feels so easy there's nothing forced there's nothing there's no need to all that tension can just go away and it's amazing when you start to go oh my god that this feels so easy moving back to what i was saying i i teach people to really do some over the top inhales and exhales to get those muscles working because i just don't think i think you just fall back into old habits of breathing into the chest and letting everything here go floppy um unless you are really used to using the right part of you and really used to that feeling of just engaging your body and getting that sense of feeling the cords, holding the breath back, not letting any air out. You can hear me doing it. My voice sounds different because I'm almost using it how I would when I sing. And then there's loads of air left at the end. You don't get that unless you really overdo it i think a lot of things in vocal technique i have found and i've and again when i'm teaching students this is what has worked for me is to go to extremes do things in the extreme do things in a way that you find the absolute extreme boundary of something you find the other end of the spectrum and you get the middle ground that you're looking for so to really engage your diaphragm i feel like you need to overdo it so i say to people and this is not an end result again coaches might be going you shouldn't breathe like that you don't need to you don't but you certainly do if you if you want to get the whole system working. You need to start with that. It's boring work. Oh, God, do I have to sit here doing weird breathing and stuff like that? Some people are so, like, not ready. Most singers just aren't ready to actually work on their voice. It's like this departure from what they enjoy about music. It's so far from the songs and the emotion. And singing is just this expression that they just don't want to do it. And it's like, okay, fine, don't do it then. Like end up like me and ruin your voice and and sit here getting really emotional about the fact that I want to sing a song but I've got a weird sound in my voice that doesn't really seem to go away these days after the operation uh, I went back to singing at, at weddings and events and parties and pubs so quickly before I was ready I did a I did a full 
day a set in, for a ceremony, a set in the afternoon, and then a two hour set with my band. That was my first gig back after just less than the minimum time they said for me to start singing after the rehabilitation. I don't think it's ever really properly healed. I think I've, I think I've probably got permanent damage. Oh, well, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world. I'm a little bit rough around the edges and a little bit rock and roll in my lifestyle. I do things that you shouldn't do as a singer uh, and I pay for it and it gets me upset. So it's up to you. If you, if it matters, it's up to you. So singing matters and it does. Back to what I was saying. If you want to in engage your diaphragm and you want to learn how to sing with your diaphragm, you've got to do this stuff. And it's not rocket science and it's not that hard and it soon becomes second nature and you don't even have to think about it and it's great and it's done. But just spend a bit of time doing it. You can do this work when you're sat at your desk at work, driving the car, anything. You can practice breathing anytime you like. On the phone, just practice holding your breath when you talk. Yeah, um, yeah, okay, so uh, I'm just trying not to let any breath out while I talk. And you realise what that feels like and you go, oh, that's what I need to do when I sing because then I can just go, ah! for ages and, and, and there's no pressure happening it's easy okay i've gone on and on and on and on and on here's the exercises let's get to it engage your diaphragm breathe all the way out get some good posture first it helps just to stop you feeling the 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 the, the impulse to sort of lift your chest and shoulders if i said take a deep breath 99.9% .9 people just go and they go, I'm taking a deep breath. Look, you can see me doing it. Um, it's so funny. I check every time I have a student in there. I may ask them to do it and they do exactly the same thing every time. I just love to check because it's like, right, great. So that's not how to breathe when you're singing. Get some good posture to stop you making that movement. Then <sighs> breathe all the way out and just pull in your stomach a little bit. Some people don't like this sort of way of doing it. I just think it does get people using the right muscles. This is how I teach it. Okay. You breathe all the way out, every little bit of air out. And then when you breathe in, you're trying to make the movement happen down here. And then when you breathe out, you're using the muscles again and you're getting all of the air out and you're engaging these muscles. You're keeping these muscles engaged. You're not breathing in, then just letting go and going loose. You have no support then. There's no support. It's all floppy. And then you'll start to squeeze. And all that body language I've talked about in my other videos and in my reels on Instagram... The, the, the squirmy body language will start to happen if you haven't got the support. Okay, so what I want you to do is just really slowly breathe all the way out and almost try and expand this part of yourself, the whole 360 of yourself, side muscles, oblique muscles at the back, I believe they're called as well. Just try and use your lower abdomen to breathe in and then breathe out, but still keep the muscles engaged. The idea is you start off really slow. I'm probably breathing into the microphone ridiculously now. It probably sounds like some sort of creepy caller from a horror movie down the phone. I'm doing it again. <laughs> Just slowly breathe in. Slowly breathe out. Trying to use those muscles. <sighs> Maintaining that posture up here. Now I'm speeding it up a little bit there. Because <sighs> eventually we're trying to get to that. The idea is that you take some really slow inhales. You can get a bit dizzy. I'm feeling a bit dizzy doing that. <sighs> slow exhale. Three, four seconds or so. Then one or two seconds. Then one second. And then really quick to the point where we get to a dog pant. There's different stages of this. Oh, I am definitely going lightheaded. Watch out for that. Now you can see... This is happening here. You can see the movement there. That's my diaphragm doing that. The aim is to get to that point. The aim is to get from these big, slow inhales, big, slow exhales to speeding it up a bit. Still going deeper than you need to there. Still going deeper than you need to because you're trying to train yourself to keep the muscles in use and not go floppy. I'm going to use that phrase to help you understand it. 
start to recognize when you've let go. And you've just relaxed so much that you've gone floppy and you've slouched. I'm not a big one about posture. Some people are, you know, depends on the training, depends. But it, it does help to, to get things right, just to keep that posture reasonably good. <laughs> And the aim is to get to that, where you can go in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. Because obviously in between songs, in between phrases in a song. And I say, you're just trying to be able to get a quick breath like that. And I'm doing it a bit noisily and a bit obviously, but you can really hear it. And I don't think I necessarily do it how I would in a song when I'm teaching, but... Um, but I'm demonstrating it so you can hear that, that quick breath out and in, out and in. It's out first because you've still got breath left. You should always have breath left at the end of, uh, end of a phrase. You can choose to slowly exhale at the end of the line, slowly let that air escape towards the end of a phrase. But it depends what effect you're looking for. It depends on the style. It depends what you're trying to achieve. I, I realize that I've been teaching people to hold on to the breath and keep it compressed right to the end of the phrase and then let go. But actually in reality, I probably don't do that and lots of singers don't do that and you probably do allow the air to escape on the last part of the phrase on purpose so that you can empty out and, and fill back up again. But again, it depends what you're trying to achieve and once you get in control of this, you just start to get this momentum with it. You just start, start to get this freedom with it. And I almost encourage people to practice breathing even when they don't feel they need to. If you're holding on to the breath and you're singing a line, I don't really need to breathe. Or if you do a short phrase, and then you do the next phrase, you don't need to breathe in between there, but do so anyway, because the momentum is really useful. And when people say that, the breath is the engine of your voice. I always thought that meant it was the fuel of your voice. And it is kind of the fuel. It is like the petrol of your voice. It is like the fuel of your voice. But actually, it's the engine is the mechanics, the moving part, the momentum of an engine in time with the song, in time with the music. And your breathing is in time with the music where you're choosing to exhale and inhale in between phrases just for the sake of it, just because you can, just because it helps reset every line, reset, 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 reset. Then you get into this momentum that fits with the rhythm of the song. It fits with the timing of your phrases. And you feel in such control. It helps your body be in tune with the whole song or in rhythm with the whole song. Um, and, and it really makes you, your whole self engage with it and consistently. So you don't run out one phrase and then be more supported on the next one. You're choosing to breathe in and out. In between each phrase, even when you don't need to, so that each line is completely reset and ready and it's, and it's consistent. I advise people practicing to breathe even when they don't feel they need to, because if you're managing to hold back the breath, how I've just described, you don't necessarily need to take a breath, but it's good to do so because you create that momentum. You get that engine working for you. Um, I hope that makes sense. That's about it. Now, I've kind of rambled my way through this and, and done it off the top of my head a little bit. You know, I've got a script in front of me that I've, I've looked at a couple of times, but I'm just trying to get you to take on these concepts. And I've, a lot of the teaching videos that I've done in this recently have been about breathing. And I wanted to do a long form YouTube one as my first video on YouTube. I hope it makes sense to you. And, and I hope that my story helps people actually feel like it's something they need to address um, because maybe that's the way to get through to people. And maybe that's my strongest selling point is that I really did destroy my voice. I abused it. I sang too hard. I sang for years with bad technique. I abused it. Um, and I, I don't think it'll ever be the same again, even though my, my technique is immeasurably better than it ever was because all the training finally went in. Everything I learned finally went in and I finally finally understood it and I finally put all the pieces in together. Um, but only through having a break, only through stopping singing for a period of time so I didn't keep reverting back to old habits. And you, you've, you've got to see it as your task now to be aware of the habits that you are, uh, that are showing up in your singing. 
because they creep back in and things change. I want people to remember that it's a moving target. Your voice is never the same twice. Your level of tiredness and, and sleep, um, what you've been eating, you know, diet has a massive effect on the voice, um, drinking, smoking, whether you've been shouting in a loud environment, what, how you sang the night before, how you sang the week before, what you've been doing in your practice or not. Um, all sorts of things play into how your voice is, how hydrated you are. All sorts of things affect how your voice comes out and little habits. It happens all the time for me still. Little habits creep in that you don't see them coming and suddenly you're like, I've got this tension I didn't have a week ago that's suddenly come back. Where's that come from? And you just have to reset it and recalibrate the muscles. And what warming up exercises are for is to, is to reprogram, reprogram the muscles. You need to constantly reprogram the muscle memory because it's a part of our body. I think this is a, the best way of describing why it needs to be reprogrammed. You don't need to reprogram the muscles when you run as an athlete, or do you? Yeah, because they practice They practice the, the, the set, setting off. They practice the start of, of running. I've, I've, I've just come up with this now. Um, you know, they practice technique in, in running to make sure that the muscle memory is so solid and so secure. But I think... With the voice, the, there are so many parts of uh, of the apparatus or things that are attached to the larynx, things that, are, things that are attached to the area of our body that we we have to isolate, that are based on instinct and survival, like the swallowing muscles and the tongue, and all of this stuff under here gets involved because our body just does things instinctively. It's supposed to uh, stop food going down the airway and those kinds of things. So. When we try and do something with our voice, we, our brain goes, do something down there. And it goes, oh, I don't know. Ah, and it just grabs or it pulls or it does something with the wrong types of muscles, the wrong muscle groups that are outside of the larynx that cause the strain that we don't want. And I think it's very easy for those things to start creeping back in and getting involved. And we have to constantly train ourselves to, un to, to not do so, to not let those muscles be involved in voice production. So I hope I've made my point um, about breathing. Take the time just to stand there when you've got spare minutes. It doesn't need to be this big thing. I'm going to do some breathing exercises now. Just do it in your daily life. Just practice breathing in deep and then try and speed it up to a dog pan and just see that the action's happening here. And you're like, I've got that. I can now do that breathing. Then the next step is to try and apply that to your songs and how you are singing and how much air is escaping on the very instant you go to sing and how much air is escaping during the phrase. If it is escaping, then you've got work to do on, on, on letting go and just realizing that it's actually way easier than you think. And, and try not to do that pushing the breath through the vocal cords thing that's happening. Start to try and isolate and notice whether your air is escaping like this, shh, all the way out like this. It's almost like it suddenly becomes so much easier than you think. Um, and you don't need to put all that force into it because you've got the support and the support is working for you. That's your job. It's to look out for those things. If you want some further help, uh, come to me, uh, send me a message, uh, give me a comment, ask me any of your questions. I'll get back to you. I'll be releasing a short course uh, on breathing with some more exercises, more ways to understand this stuff. So if you're interested in getting a little bit deeper into this, I can have some step-by-step -step, little quick guides and things you can try and ways to improve your breathing hopefully by the time i've done all this the link will be in the comments uh the link will be in the description sorry and you can get that as a free download uh straight to your email good luck with your singing and don't be like me take it more seriously try and unpick the things that you're doing and see if you can get control of your breath so that the rest of your technique can start to happen and good luck <laughs>